<laughs> hey there, Buttercup. Did I scare you? I thought you loved the good jump scare. Let me get a taste of those lips. On second thoughts, I wouldn't want a snack too much before the main course, right? <laughs> I can't believe the day is finally here. You can't either. Feels like forever since the pact we made, huh? Well, don't worry about that, Buttercup. Forever won't be a concern of yours after tonight because time will no longer be a concept that bothers you <laughs> i gotta ask though did you bring it yes you got it i'm so proud of you baby tell me did their cries sound delicious? <laughs> I always knew you were a killer in the making. Of course, your murder cherry was popped long before this. One whole year to the day when you met me. Or should I say, when I saw you and felt the overwhelming urge to devour you, I stalked you down the darkness of the shitty London streets. I was inches away from pressing my fangs into your neck and feeling the hot gush of your blood fill my mouth. <laughs> then I realized that you were also hunting. <laughs> so I watched and was amazed by the art that you could create. With such a simple blade. That poor bastard's blood stained the walls for months before the council finally painted over it. <laughs> Banksy level shit! Almost forgivable for wasting such delicious blood. But judging by this bottle here, you didn't waste a single drop this time. <laughs> he will enjoy it very, very much, Buttercup. So this is your twelfth offering now. So with this, <laughs> the pact will be complete, and you can finally see from my side, the side of the immortals. I knew that eating you last year would have been such a waste, Buttercup. <laughs> when you looked me in the eyes, saw the predator that I am, and showed nothing but love and adoration for my bloodlust, it was love at first sight. And fright for the poor bastards who just happened to walk down that alley after. <laughs> I know you can. Buttercup, but just a little longer, all right? You will make an incredible vampire. And not just any vampire. A true vampire of the Red Fang Court. The greatest court. <sighs> now, Buttercup. I do need to make sure you've done your research. He will no doubt ask, 
He's very anal about that when it comes to possible bloodlings. And what is a bloodling, Buttercup? <laughs> That's right! Newly turned vampires for the Red Fang Court. Now, let's refresh the memory in that pretty head of yours. So, in order for you to be prepared, what are the Red Fang Court? <laughs> That's right, Buttercup! We are vampires that honor our true birthright to go where we please, to eat who we please, and to feed as much as we please. Vampires, very power comes from blood. It isn't just for food, but for greatness. Our gods were insatiable in their bloodlust. So why, why should we control it to adhere to laws made by inferior beings? Feeding brings us closer to the gods, just like our leader centuries ago, Lord Nicholas. He soaked the ground of our old homeland red for generations. He gorged so much during the gluttony days that it is said that he saw a path to the vampire god himself. The way was almost open, and he would have ascended to join him and guide our race to salvation. Until the gluttony days were ruined by the disgusting weapons of man. And don't forget the human protectors, the shield of Seraph. Warlocks, whose power insults the very balance. Well, Buttercup, humans shouldn't have access to the powers of magic. They should be nothing but cattle for us to feed on. But nevertheless, the Shield of Seraph in the U.S. were quite problematic. And the help from our treacherous White Widow Court. <laughs> and who are they? <laughs> That's right, Buttercup. The White Widows are false messiahs and fat, bloated, overly privileged zealots. They spit in the face of our birthrights by ignoring our very instincts. Only eat what is needed to survive. <laughs> Madness! just to keep the rest of the world from turning on us. We should be ruling the rest of the world. And Lord Nicholas offered to join with the courts. Hell, he's the cousin to the sisters of the White Widow Court. And yet, they betrayed their family. It was not the rest of the world that turned on us, but our own people. The false, lying White Widow Court and their deserter, the traitor that runs the pompous, money-hungry, human-loving Shadow Court. Alistair. <laughs> Brother. To the sisters. It all goes down in a family, am I right? <laughs> they say we are the reason that the states forbid 
magical blooded. But if it wasn't for their treachery, the states would be a motherfucking utopia. The rivers would be running with luscious blood, and all races would be free to live their lives happily under our boots, of course. <laughs> Correct, Buttercup. Correct. The Red Fang Court did continue to exist in secret. We we're biding our time to strike. Until something happened. One hundred years ago. Long before your time. What was it? That's right. I'm so proud of you, Buttercup. You're doing great. The famous demon uprising. The gateway to the demon world somehow opened in the middle of London, and the demons attacked. That's when the filthy, disgusting, hind-legged standing dogs and our treacherous kin revealed themselves to the humans and helped to fight them off. Alistair of the Shadow Court used this as an opportunity to sink his court's teeth into the world of business and investment. <laughs> a laughable concept for a delusional life stuck. But some good did come of it. The United Kingdom decided to accept all magical blooded in their land. <laughs> With restrictions, of course, as is common for the livestock in order to maintain their false perception of control. But we were wise to take control of it. We now have a foothold established here and are using our resources to boost our ranks over in the States. The day will one day be here when we will rise. And Buttercup, what is the plan? <laughs> That's right, Buttercup. Good. The prophecy of the Black Sun. Legend says that once a vampire attains the power of a god through gorging on enough blood, they will be able to black out the sun, drowning it in eternal night. It is then, in eternal night, that the red fangs will transform into our ultimate, purest form and rip apart the world and rebuild it with the flesh and bones of our kills. Doesn't it sound glorious, Buttercup? <sighs> and yet, these morons brand us as terrorists. Disgusting! Just because we remember the old ways. And the prophecy will not be a joke once Lord Nicholas finally has enough blood. He would have done it already. But we ran into, um, complications. What complications? Well... I'll let Lord Nicholas tell you, Buttercup, since helping me to deal with these 
complications is the trump card that I used to get him to agree to a pact with you. I know our lord very well. We go <laughs> way back. How old am I? Buttercup. You shouldn't ask a vampire his age. <laughs> it's very rude. <laughs> okay, Han. It's time to take you through the gates of paradise. In. To. My world. Through here. Don't be afraid of the dark. I'll be right here by your side. And soon, darkness will be your plaything, Buttercup. Can you hear it? Isn't it just music to your ears? The sound of feeding. Our red fang brethren feeding on their prey. Some willing, and some misguided. Let me tell you a little something about the Vampire's Buttercup. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've told you before. You've never seen me feed. But if you look to my right, you see those bodies. Do you see their throats are torn out? Blood and gore everywhere. That, that is obviously the body of a fool who resisted. You see, Buttercup, if our prey resist and scream and try to fight, it sets off our instincts and we can go a little crazy. They call it the frenzy. It basically means we're gonna tear their fucking throats out and drink them dry all the same. It's a primal instinct of ours. And you see, our treacherous can use their powers to brainwash their prey to bathe themselves. So they drink from their necks politely. While we like to go for a little more natural approach. If they behave themselves, we'll feed on them nicely. They'll still die all the same, but it'll be so gentle. But if they resist and scream like some of these fools here, we'll tear them to pieces. After all, why should we refrain from our true nature? <laughs> I don't know why they call us terrorists. Have they not seen a reduction in homelessness since we set up real operations here? We're great for the economy. <laughs> Why don't we just turn people and build an army? <sighs> so, I can teach you something you don't already know after all, Buttercup. The Red Fang Court have learned from our mistakes. At one point in the state, we were the largest court in numbers, but most were bloodlings.
Kings and were easily crushed by the White Widows and the Shadow Cord, along with crude human artillery. The Shadow Cord and the White Widow Cords are magically gifted, teaching themselves laughable abilities from inferior races in order to establish their powers. <laughs> but true ancient vampire powers comes from Gorging on blood. The Red Fangs have since changed their methods. Less members, but strictly vetted, means more trustworthy vampires. And that means less vampires to fight for blood. We utilize blood magic. The power that our kin have forsaken the very right of our people. But most vampires never manage to reach this ability because it requires us to feed a hell of a lot. All the time, non-stop. Preferably. You see, my kin around you right now. The victims they're draining dry now are at least their tenth feed of the day. Look at it as if they're fueling up for a big event. Do I need a drink? as much daily. <sighs> Good question there, Buttercup. I'm so proud of you. I've already unlocked my blood magic. I cracked the seal a long time ago. Well, I am a veteran of the gluttony days. I danced in Scarlet with Lord Nicholas. I bathed in the blood of our treacherous kin. But our Lord had other plans. Let's say I have been very patient about it. After all, what's a couple hundred years on immortality, right? But once, I have made you mine. My lover, for eternity. I will teach you the ways. I will feed you the sweet, sweet blood of your kills and mine. And once your seal is broken, we will be the very fangs of the Red Fang Cord. <laughs> I can't wait. Good evening, Brother Silas. Ah, what's up, Brother Hasty? Please, call me Hastings in front of our guest. Hey, he called you guest, and not food. He must like you. Your human partner has garnered quite the reputation amongst the court as of late. We do not recruit often, but an infamous serial killer in their own right, and endorsed by the Calamity himself, color my interest peaked. It's an old nickname of mine. I don't care much for it nowadays. Silas, the Calamity of Lord Nicholas. A name well earned. It is said that he alone devoured entire armies during the gluttony days. 
and even seriously wounded Lord Alistar of the Shadow Court. I would have taken him out if Lord Nicholas didn't stop me. Ah, blood runs thicker than water, even for vampires. I must say, though, it was your very act of defeating him that got the cogs turning towards my change of heart. <laughs> Hasty here is a former Shadow Court member, but he saw sense. He learned. It just goes to show that even an infidel can be saved. My loyalty is to power, and blood magic is power. I have fed very well since. Hasty here was our spy in the Shadow Court for centuries, until he was exposed. Indeed, by a rather infuriating meddling dog. Ah, <sighs> the white one. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Those fucking dogs never know when to keep their snouts out. But your guest will soon learn about this. It is time to meet the master. Come with me, please. And you, you, over there. Once you've finished your feed, make sure you throw the body out and get the cleaner to come and straighten the place out. It's a feeding chamber, not a dwelling of squalor. This, this is it. I'm so excited for you, Buttercup. You're about to meet our master. Word of advice, don't stare and don't look too shocked, all right? He's come under some hard times lately, but he will explain it all. Guest, this is Lord Nicholas, master of the Red Fang Court. Silas! Step forward. Bring your little doll with you. What's up, Lord Nicholas? This is my lover, and soon to be our greatest bloodling for a long time. I'm hungry. Do you have my offering or not? Of course. Go ahead, Buttercup. Thanks, doll. That tasted good. I hadn't drank in ten minutes. Was starting to dry up. That was damn good. Can tell you really put the fear in them. How did you drain them? Cut their jugular and hung them upside down over the bottle. <laughs> Good call. That's just the kind of savagery that I appreciate. My calamity has good taste in lovers. That's your twelve offering. Earned you an audience with me, it did. I suppose you want to know why. I'm in a wheelchair and look like I've been beaten like a government mule. Why my throat is torn out and not healed. Well, 
the reason is why you're here in the first place. And the reason why I humored this meeting while upholding my respect for my calamity here. Silas has been my right hand man for a long time. He's fed me more blood than anyone else. Even when he was drying up himself after we were forced into hiding at the end of the gluttony days. Oh, doll, I used to be the greatest of my kind. I have been touched by the vampire god himself until my cousins betrayed me. I lost my power. Our kind couldn't even sniff blood without being butchered by the authorities of the livestock. But a small handful of us rebuilt and bided our time. I came here during the demon uprising. 100 years ago, I came with just a handful of men, and under the black skies of war, we fed and fed. No one questioned the bodies as they lay dead with the mountains of corpses that the demons made. I got my powers back, and then we went into hiding and waited. This country's laws made life much easier to build our numbers and gorge on the blood we needed. We watched the other courts snuggle in comfortably with livestock, and we watched the other races come out of hiding and get given. Rights. <laughs> Time was almost near. I could feel the power of our God pulsing in me. I had gorged on so much blood over the last century that it was almost time to bring forth the day of the Black Sun. But then I made a mistake. An oversight. My lord, you need to feed again. Allow me to bring you more blood. Lord Nicholas, would you like me to take over? Save your strength. Go ahead. Well, it turned out, Buttercup. There was another terrorist group on behalf of another race and their old traditions. A group that is just as forbidden here as us, but with laughable ideals. But not to be taken lightly. I made that mistake once before. The Alpha Claw. Society. Their leader, he did this to me. We fucked up. We have gathered power for nearly 100 damn years. And these factions all of a sudden showed up and challenged us. Challenged us for our right to conquer, challenged us for the pick of the prey on the streets. Disgusting dogs. All just mindless mutts following an old foolish ideal from their fake lichen god. But their leader is no joke. I could have taken him. The three of us took a group of experienced red fangs to meet 
their alpha and his mutts to settle the affairs. The three of us could have taken him. Then we suffered for the first of two of our oversights. The alpha didn't just bring his mutts. He had a lover. Is that what you'd call her? The Huntress. I heard the stories. To think we all thought it was bullshit. <laughs> no bullshit. She could fight. We danced, played upon blade. She didn't even transform. And yet, it was the best fight I ever had. With the calamity preoccupied with this, Huntress, we thought he would be able to dispatch the Alpha with little effort. Lord Nicholas and I overpowered the Alpha. But then, he transformed, and we have never seen anything like it. Not even the White Wolf could possibly compare. He did this to me! <coughs> he ruined me, defiled me, left me in this chair, never to be able to hunt again! My blood magic is still beyond challenge, but I am reduced to sitting here, waiting for my people to feed me. I could heal from any wound in seconds. Once the Alpha's teeth and claws tore into me, it burned worse than anything I have ever felt. I was permanently wounded. The plan remains the same. The prophecy. Lord Nicholas can bring on the Black Sun. This is why we continue to feed and protect him. But the likes of the White One and the Alpha and his bitch is a constant threat to us, and we feel there may be a few others closing in that threaten our ascension, which is why I need a partner to help. Silas and I used to be fangs of the court. The two elite warriors specializing in blood magic in order to kill the Lord's greatest foes. But since the fight with the Alpha Claw Society... Goddamn dogs! Indeed. I have been required to remain here for his protection. Silas needs a new partner. And who better to trust and dance in Scarlet with than my own? Beautiful, wonderful, murderous buttercup. We were meant to be, darling. So what do you say, doll? Will you accept the pact's final steps to be taken and turned by my calamity? To be his pet, his lover, and my fresh bloodling. I expect you to gorge on blood until your belly bursts in order to unlock the power needed to serve our prophecy. To feed me with blood of each kill you make to strike down our enemies like the cursed Alpha Claw and to lead us to the salvation of Crimson. Do you accept? 
Delicious, my darling. Delicious. Then let it be done. Enjoy your last moments of breath as livestock as you make the change to immortal perfection. Hastings, I'm hungry. Yes, my lord. Let us hook you up to the blood pump. It is time for your feed. His will is absolute. You did it, Buttercup. I'm so proud of you. You can see it in my eyes. Ah, I can see it in yours, too. You're almost crying with joy. Oh, my love. We will do such delicious things together. We will taste the blood on our tongues and sample the sweet nectar of death as our bodies collide. The only thing I'll miss is the color of your eyes. But... I know they're gonna look absolutely beautiful in red. Are you ready, Buttercup? Come here. Come to me. Let me embrace you one last time. With your heart still beating, this may hurt just a little. You can wait. I know, I know, I can smell the anticipation in every cell of your body. Twelve months. <laughs> it seems so short compared to the eternity together we're about to indulge in. Let me taste your sweet blood, darling. Let me gorge on your love. Enjoy your last moments alive, my sweet buttercup, as you make the step from the living over to immortal death. But don't fear, Buttercup. I will be there through every step of the way. I can't wait any longer. Come over to me. Bottoms up. Eee. Mm.